close. This one is huge for both teams. Time stunner down 17 to 3. The Bengals. Four. We are seven minutes away from kickoff. Steve, I felt like an elimination game before these teams. Minnesota getting that victory, and the Bengals get playing right now. You got the Colts, they're playing, and the Detroit Vikings, they play each other again. And, and I love the pointless games at the end. These are guys who are just playing for the next season for the playoffs. That's exciting. Complacent and, and just kind of. Cincinnati in order to get the NFL game day kickoff here for season with five wins while averaging to Colts 17 to 13. I, I'm not. Yeah, That's what I got. Gerald, listen, what you got? Listen, my Colts 17 14. I saw that I was talking. Oh, you talking about my buddy Loso? Yeah, yeah Loso. Okay, we're all taking the Colts here. And as I was saying, by the way, the side, Mitch Trubisky averaging 115. You're down, we had overtime. What a game. What an end to this one. Kickoff next in Indy. Showdown triple header. The seven and six, a de facto playoff game made even our triple header as the first member of the seven of Gardner Minshew coming out for the Indianapolis week in the concussion protocol. Fools to put them at seven and six now. Just leapfrogged a whole bunch of teams. NFL Network, I am Rich Eisen, joined by my Hall of Fame buddy, Kurt Warner. And it's funny, uh, Mike Tomlin said to us as soon as we met with him yesterday, he says, this is a big game for us. No sense in wasting any energy on trying to play it cool. This is huge. Well, and both teams told us that this is playoff time. They cannot wait four weeks, especially with what Cincinnati just did. There is no margin for error. And we know that if either of these teams is going to make a playoff push, it's going to come at the right arm of their backup quarterback. The Colts, it's Gardner Minshew who was brought over here by Shane Steichen from Philly after spending two years there saying, hey, if we need a veteran presence, he is the perfect guy for the job, and he has led them to five wins. On the other side, it's Mitch Trubisky. He was brought here to be a mentor to Kenny Pickett, but they knew that he had franchise quarterback experience. They know that they're going to need him in this big moment, and it will not be too big for him, Rich. And maybe to give the offense a little bit of an attaboy going out there. The Steelers won the toss and elected to receive and put their offense out on the field first. So, an electric atmosphere inside Lucas Oil Stadium. I'm used to being here for the Genteel Combine where you can hardly... Well, it's only a few weeks away, Rich. You'll be right back here I know. in no time. But that is surprising that they chose to go giving the ball to their offense. Their offense has struggled, but maybe this is, hey, you know, pat these guys on the back. Hey, we've got confidence in you to come out and lead the way today. Normally, I can hear a pin drop in here. Instead, Colts fans have shown up in full throat, and a whole boatload of towel-waving Yinzers have made the short flight or doable drive to Indianapolis. And this one is corralled by Igwe Buque, who takes it past the 30. And some nice field position to start for the Steelers' offense. Jamie Erdahl, take it away. Well, Rich, if you're a 7-6 and six team in the AFC fighting for a spot in the playoffs, your company's holiday party is this weekend, and both teams today have RSVP'd yes. In the case of the Steelers, the commentary surrounding this team's season has gotten so loud, even one of their former quarterbacks, Ben Roethlisberger, has chimed in this week saying, quote, the tradition of the Steelers is gone. Now, we didn't ask Mike Tomlin directly about that quote, but he did say to us, I like it best when the noise gets loud. Greatness can only be cultivated when conditions are less than ideal. Well, the noise is loud on the first snap of the game. It's Harris, who is hit by EJ Speed, returning from a one-game absence and making his presence known right away. No game. Yeah, well, Mike Tomlin was talking about Mitch Trubisky and you asked him why you wanted him a part of this. He said, hey, he has franchise quarterback experience. He's been in that moment and had that pressure. Brought here to help Kenny Pickett, but now inserted into the lineup to make those big plays and help this team punch their ticket to the playoffs. Second and ten. Trubisky, first attempt of the game. And he's taken down, sacked. Rover Stewart also back just last week. Brings up third and long. Well, and it is sacked by committee for the Indianapolis Colts. They've got a bunch of guys, 13 guys on this team that have a sack. And you see blue jerseys all over the place. Just a matter of who gets that tick in the sack column. But 
They have done a great job at getting after the quarterback without bringing pressure. Only four guys on the rush right there. Third and 14. Trubisky flips it out. Lauren. And Jalen Lauren gets back right around the original line of scrimmage. Three and out for the Steelers. And now you wonder if the Steelers are scratching their head going, why did we, why did we take the ball? It's the same thing that we've been seeing. They make the change to Eddie Faulkner as their offense coordinator. They have one breakout game of over 400 yards, but then it's been back to the struggles they've had, and we see it right there. A quick three and out for the Colts. Stellar rookie Josh Downs back to receive the punt from Presley Harvin the third. He boots it, spirals it, Downs has it. And he takes it just past his 30. So it's time for Gardner Minshew and the offense to come out. And Minshew making his 10th start in place of the injured rookie Anthony Richardson, who is here today. And as I had mentioned, he had been with Shane Steichen for, for a couple years in Philly, so they knew that he could run the offense. Gardner Minshew said that, I feel like I know why Shane Steichen is calling each and every play, and it allows me to succeed within this offense. First snap of the game for the Colts offense is a pitch out to Zach Moss playing in start of the injured Jonathan Taylor, gain of one. And Zach Moss has been a bright spot for this team as well. Jonathan Taylor not in camp early on. We know suffered the wrist injury a few weeks back. But Zach Moss is still 15th in the National Football League, over 700 yards rushing. So they love the fact that they've got this secondary back to kind of keep the seat warm in hopes that Jonathan Taylor could come back down the stretch. Second and nine from their own 32 after getting the Steelers three and out. Shoot. close to first down yardage but it'll bring up third and short well that's exactly what michael pittman does is he's the guy that catches those balls underneath the big body there just run him on a shallow route tough to miss for a quarterback with big 11 running across there sets him up for a nice third and short here from their own 39 pittman's at six straight with at least eight reception that ties marvin harrison's team record a bad name to tie. It's only in the ring of honor here. Mitchell out to Pittman again. First down. And this is what the Colts do better than anybody in the National Football League. It's the RPO. They've got a run play called. Read the defensive end. You see Highsmith coming down, and they set a little bit of a rub on the outside for Michael Pittman. And the easy catch for the first down. Going fast. Speeding it up from their own 47. First first down of the game. It's Moss in motion. Throws it to his left. It's Downs. And Downs is taken down in Pittsburgh territory by DeMonte Casey. So Minshew. Behind this offensive line with Ryan Kelly and Quentin Nelson right there in the middle to the left. Blake Freeland is the rookie out of tackle. And you can see Pittman Downs and Alec Pierce, the Cincinnati receiver. Moss looking for the first down, and he's going to be ruled just short of it to bring up third and short. As for the Pittsburgh starting defense, Cameron Hayward, the OG right up front with Benton, and Highsmith and Watt both emerging from concussion protocol this week with Minka Fitzpatrick and the rookie Joey Porter Jr. Highlighting with Patrick Peterson that secondary. Third and one, nearing the 10-minute mark of the opening quarter here in Indy. It's Moss. He's got the first down. So that's two movings of the chain. And they're playing the game the way they want to play the game. They want to win on early downs. You already mentioned that Freeland it's going to be at right tackle going against the long yardage situations. They're winning the early downs so far. And going fast again on it. Mitchu from the logo over the middle. That's Moss. Just a gain of about three. Trying to catch him on the big play action. See if they can go fast and get one up over the top. Good coverage on the back end. Arnie Mitchu just has to check it down. Mitchu is five of five to start this game. Ball rests 
just north of the 40-yard line in between the 39 and the 40 for Shane Steichen. Going five wide here on second and seven. Welcome to the NFL. That's what it's going to be about all day long. T.J. Watt back against the young rookie. Great job with the hands right there. Slap the hands down. Get the edge. He's going to be lined up on that right side of the Colts offensive line all day long. Would be surprised at some point if they give that young man a little bit of help. Loss of six. Now they're behind the sticks. Ninth play of the drive. Third and 13 from the Pittsburgh 45. Minshew over the middle of the Downs. And he's taken down by Casey. And the Steelers defense loves that. They're sitting back at the stick saying, hey, throw it underneath. As soon as Casey sees the ball come out of his hands, he's coming downhill. Bow! The big hit on the young rookie receiver. However, it was enough to get it to the 37-yard line. So here's Matt Gay, who had a host of 50 yarders in a Colts win in Baltimore earlier this year from 56 to try and start the scoring. Matt Gay, wide left. And three and out. <laughs> then the Colts march down the field. Until they started running into that Steelers defense, T.J. Watt sack, and then a Matt Gay missed field goal, and the Steelers improved field position between their first and second possessions. From the 46, Trubisky, and that's Allen Robinson, the veteran. And they played together in Chicago back in the day, and that connection works again here in Pittsburgh. When you talked about their struggling offense. Next Gen Stats powered by AWS. Deep passes. Mitch Trubisky loves to throw the ball down the field. They just haven't had a lot of success completing those passes. And you see on the second line, last in the National Football League in yak yards. Yards after catch. So they've got to try to generate some ways to get the ball down the field and make some easy drives. They just haven't been very good at it. Powered by AWS. This is powered by Harris for no gain. Taekwon Lewis with the stop. And I love their approach on first down. Come out and throw a quick one. Get the ball out of Mitch's hands. Get a completion. Set yourself up for second and short. And hand the football off, which is not where we know they want to live. They want to live running the football, but it makes it so much easier on your quarterback when you find yourself in third and short. Jalen Warren to Trubisky's left. On third and three. Trubisky over the middle. There's fire move. As if you couldn't tell from the Steeler <laughs> fans here. They're, I, I'm mandated as a broadcaster to say they're not saying boo. <laughs> they're saying move. First down. But he's the guy that they love to work inside between the hashes, whether it's down the field or on the short little hookup right there. Get your feet past the sticks. Good timing by Mitch Trubisky to get that completion and move the sticks. There's your first first down of the game for the Steelers. And they're set up on the Indianapolis 42. Warren staying in the game on first down. And he gets it. Nice game. Inside the 40 to the 37. There's Gus Bradley, the D.C. here in Indianapolis. And with Gus's defense, they don't like to bring pressure. They like to play coverage on the back end and make it tough on the quarterback. They've had the luxury of being able to do that this year because they can sack you with four up front. They don't have to bring those extra guys. I mentioned it earlier, 13 different guys with sacks. So they've got a committee that'll get after the quarterback. Gain of four, it's from the 38. A little bit of trickling, almost intercepted by the league's leading tackler. Zaire Franklin almost had a big play. Instead, it's a nice back down and pass breakup, bringing up third. Well, we talked to Franklin because last week, 
against Cincy. They gave up 125 yards on screens, and he said, we just have to be better on all levels, but I cannot let my read get away from me, and I can't let them get out on big plays on the screen. And you see it right there. Almost turned that one the other direction. Third and six from the 38. Trubisky moves a time over the middle, and it's caught. There's George Pickens' first catch of the game, and it's a big one, 16 yards. First down. Hey, he's going to be the big in route coming from the left-hand side. And Mitch told us we've always got a number of throws early in the game to get to George. Just for some reason, the ball hasn't come his way. Doesn't want to force it, but nice when the opening happens like that and you can get it to your big-time receiver. Harris back in the game as the ball is on the 23-yard line. It's a first down carry for Harris. And with these, as you're seeing here, Kurt, Harris has touched it, Lawrence touched it, Robinson's touched it, Firemuth's touched it, Pickens has touched it. These are some very talented players on an offense that just hasn't been clicking. Well, we were asking all the guys in our meetings, like, okay, you look around, you have all this talent. Why isn't it clicking? And the amazing thing is nobody really had an answer for us. They were shaking their head, talking to Eddie Faulkner, their new OC. He said it's like popcorn, that it's always something a little bit different. Something pops over here, something pops over there, so they can't put their finger on what's been the problem. Thus, it's hard to fix it. Second and nine. Trubisky to Pickens. It's a move. George Pickens takes it inside the 10. First and goal, Pittsburgh. Well, there's a little yak right there. We said that they were last in the league in yak. Complete that ball underneath the sticks. But again, you see the kind of playmaker that this guy can be with the ball in his hands. Flips it to the outside. A little stutter. And around the corner, setting him up inside the 10. Juju Brents, who's back after... Being out since week seven was the corner that Pickens ran around there. And the Pittsburgh now in the red zone where they've had some troubles all year. We'll see what happens here. It's Warren on the pitch. Warren takes it close. And he's ruled down around the one and a half. And Najee Harris is their pounder, right? He's the guy that comes and he brings the physicality and the energy and the juice comes from Jalen Warren. You see it right there. Make one guy miss and hit the corner almost to the goal line there. EJ Speed, one of the three Colts in on that. Second and goal. It's Warren in there. short of the touchdown brings up third down Grover Stewart with another big play surprised you get down here why you don't put your big back in there to run it downhill maybe give him the threat of the throw right there but nice job up the middle they're going to defense they're going fast they're on it again. it's Trubisky the keeper and he's ruled down short Samson Eberkam. And DeForest Buckner jumping over the pile to keep him out. It's fourth down. 12th play of the drive. Harris comes in. They've got a push play on the eastern side of the state. Let's see if the western part of PA has one. It's Harris lined up. Single back. Trubisky keeps it. Ball comes loose. Harris picks it up and scores. Or oh, they're ruling him down. This place is going nuts. I, mean, I don't know how he's down. He's down at all. I don't know, not going anywhere. Hold on. A 
As you can see, the score is 6 nothing, and Colts fans are booing, although it was the right call. Upon further review, Trubisky had broken the plane. They initially ruled it was a fumble, and since it was fourth down, anybody other than Trubisky to pick it up and advance it makes the play dead. And that's what they had called before going to break. And they corrected it by replay as the ball hits the upright on the extra point. So it'll stay 6-0. And this is a wild sequence, to say the least. Gene Steratore, our rules analyst, joins us now. Gene, you have the floor. Yeah, you did a great job of giving me a setup too, Rich. As you said, we can clearly see now on this replay that Trubisky breaks the plane of the goal line right there. So after review, which was an automatic review, the original ruling was, as you said, Trubisky fumbles the football in the field of play. It's a fourth down, fourth down. Only the fumbler can recover in advance. When Harris picks that ball up, it is dead. So they ruled that initially because it's a turnover on downs, automatically reviewed. When they go back and look, Trubitsky breaks the play into the goal line, touchdown Pittsburgh. And it caps a 12-play, 54-yard drive that culminates with Chris Boswell's first mixed extra point of the year. That was a smart play by Mitch Trubisky. You know it's fourth down. You don't really care if they knock the ball out. If you don't get that initial surge, just kind of jump up, reach that thing, hope you get it across the plane, as we saw right there. It wasn't by much, but just enough to put six points on the board. And lost amongst the madness of the sequence from the fourth down play through to the replay to the missed extra point, as this is a touchback. That may be, you know, the play call is right there. Nice balance between run and pass. Got the one big play down the middle of the field to George Pickens, but it was nice, conservative, methodical, and six points. Mitchu was six of six on the opening drive for Indianapolis. Uh, uh, Sets up shot from his own 25. Great, great, great. Well, anyway, uh, Zach Short gain on first down. So we hit the one minute mark of the first quarter here in Indianapolis. For the Steelers, nice to have those two bookends back for sure. And oftentimes when we talk about teams win loss record, we put a lot on the quarterback. Who's playing quarterback for them? But with the Steelers team, a lot of times you can say it's a TJ Watt. When he's on the field, this team wins football games. Alex Highsmith is that other bookend you're referring to. Second and seven. And you to Pittman. Makes the grab. Had he not double clutched it, he might have had a lot more after the catch. And it's ruled incomplete. All right, went up and extended as high as he could go. Just mm. wasn't able to pull it in. Good protection to allow him to get separation at the top, but a little bit of an errant throw there by Gardner Mishu. Wish, wishing he had that one back. Brings up third and seven. Steelers can get off the field here after scoring their touchdown moments ago. Mitchu oh steps up. And he's taken down. Logan Joby with the second sack of Mitchu already today. The towels are waving here, Kurt. <laughs> They are, and this is what you want to do if you're the Steelers' defense is you get them in third and long, force Garner Minshew to move and have to hold the football to throw it down the field. And just like with the Colts, there's lots of guys that can get after the quarterback on the Steelers' defensive line. And that brings a, I guess, steel.